Welcome back to Learn SKN, and we're going to pick up from where we left off last time. We're going to just jump back to, we're going to do a quick recap to what we did last time, and we're going to continue with business finance, and hope, hopefully we can finish this today. So we would have covered the, describe the role and function of, you know, the central bank, we looked at that. So all of these would have similar functions and roles. Uh, the role of regulatory bodies to monitor, control, and guide various industry sectors in order to protect consumers. Functions of the regulatory bodies to enforce regulations and license of various financial activities, including depository, lending, collection, money, transmission. Describe the relationship between financial institutions and the regulatory bodies. So that's what we're looking at just now. Central banks ways in which the central bank may regulate commercial banks and we looked at a bunch of it before variations in the liquid asset ratio that's what, that's what we're talking about the reserve what they have to keep in reserve variation or adjustment the bank um the bank rate that's the interest rate changing up the minimum reserve requirement again we looked at that before and that can influence interest rates and all those things financial services commission and the supervisor of insurance so those are all the regulatory bodies that ensures that these banks operate how they are supposed to of course okay let's go number five outline ways used by individuals to manage personal income ways of managing personal income allocation of income relative to commitments through the use of budget of course budgeting we all know what budgeting is that's when you 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 plan out your in your cash inflows and your cash outflows that's a budget you know you drop down how much money you're making and what you're going to spend on this can help you to see where your money is coming from and see where your money is going so you're able to manage your money better that's why you need a budget the budget helps to manage your money better you see where your money coming from you see where it's going you see where you might you know be able to save okay you don't you might have you might not be able to spend money on going out this month because going out takes a lot of money so in the budget you're gonna say okay pull back on the you know the, the lineman pull back on the, 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 the going out to the restaurant based on your budget of course savings is another way to you know control your personal income you know you choose to save your money you choose to spend it so savings is another way to basically build some not wealth per se because you can't really build wealth on savings but you can build you know some funds investment and financial advising investment you there are a number of ways you can invest as an individual you can invest in the stock market you can invest in the government buying bonds buying treasury bills you can invest in the in real estate you can buy some land so there are a number of ways you can invest in reusing your monies all right so let's go back down and see what else we have to look at as it relates to those topics so banking back up we're going back to the top here bank risk and regulations so let's go into that and then we're going to get back to the savings all right the banking risk and regulation the central bank regulates commercial banks to protect depositors there should be not too much lent to any single borrower so you have to be able to be careful as a cent as a commercial bank you can't just lend all the money to one person that's not wise and so that goes without saying that the central bank have to keep an eye on that enough cash for consumer withdrawal so that's what we're talking about the the reserve they need to have a certain amount of money in reserve so that if your consumers are to come to withdraw money you have enough because the reality is this the banks the money that you deposit is the money that is used to lend other people so the bank the money comes in you lend you deposit that money they take that same money and lend somebody else so at any given time you might not have your money per se at hand but they have enough in reserve to give you that money until a person repay the loan so you need to have a certain money money is in reserve some commercial banks also regulate insurance companies and credit unions deposit insurance schemes protect most bank customers intervention when needed so we looked at that earlier we look at the the crisis that we mentioned earlier and we mentioned how banks had to go and you know help out other banks before they collapse danger unrealistic promises are very high risk. so these are what you have to look out for when you're trying to invest your monies all right when you're trying to invest your money you have to look out for certain things 
you have what you call a pyramid scheme a lot of people go around talking about you know you give me this amount of money and then I in turn will take that money invest it and you're gonna get double if you bring in a friend or something like that nah 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 you don't want with these Ponzi schemes a lot of people got caught with Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes you know one of the most famous Ponzi schemes was what you call Bernie Madoff you should google Bernie Madoff google Bernie Madoff and read upon him and you see how the Ponzi scheme really works you know you take people money and you say you're investing it in this and that, but you're not really, you know, tell them don't get a lot of returns, high returns on your investment. But the reality is you're taking people money and you spend it on your own and you invest in your own thing and then they don't really get any returns on that. So you have to be careful about these things. And pyramid schemes, as the name suggests, one person at the top making all the money really and truly. Eh? One person at the top making all this money. I know there are all these 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 schemes going around where they say, you know, you you pay into this pool, and if you bring in ten people, them ten people gonna pay you, and if they bring in ten more people, they're gonna pay them and so many story like that. Don't believe that stuff. The only person making money from that is one at the very top. Everybody else after them are suckers. They're making no money after that. That's why you call a pyramid scheme. So you don't want to get caught with that. Income and savings. All right, so we said that the household needs their budget, as you mentioned before, the budget to cover, you know, rent, or mortgage, food, grocery, transport, electricity, you know, utilities. So that's what the budget lays out. How are you going to get your money? Where are you going to come from? And what are you going to do with it? Your cash inflows, your cash outflows. So you, know, you might have 20% of your budget for food, a 10% for maybe transportation, and the next 5% for this, for that. Now the budget enables you to actually see what is going on so you can pull back let's say you're spending too much money on food so you might end up okay that's a little too high so based on the budget i might pull back on my expense my food expense i might not buy the expensive brands and stuff like that i might go for the na- the local brands to save some money so the budget is really essential in helping to see where your money going where you're coming from so you need a budget for that help to guide you help to guide your spending help to guide your savings so this is an example of a budget this is this is a way back when you know that's an example of a budget the same barbados you might have you know eight percent on education recreation transport maybe 17 percent medical six clothing footwear three household items you know 10 fuel six food food always always the highest part of anybody budget food food is expensive is always one of the highest part of your budget now if you're looking at this budget here of course you know you can cut back some monies on your alcohol and tobacco stop the smoking the drinking save four percent right there you may want a cheaper house you know less rent you may want to turn off your f- turn off your fans turn off your machine you know that kind of stuff to save on fuel and you know utilities and you know cut back on water so your budget is essential to help you manage your money properly why do people save there's some obvious reasons but let's break down these ones to guard against risk you know accident fire sickness so you save towards just in case you know just in case something happens to guard against unemployment you have to put up some money monthly just in case you get laid off you need some money to pay those bills to hold you over until you get a job and of course you save to buy a big ticket item like a washing machine a refrigerator not a car per se, that's kind of too big. You can't really save up to, you know, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, you know, but cars, not cars, machine, utilities. I mean, sorry, appliances, those kind of things, those big TV, your flat screen TV, your computer, game system. You know, you save, save up towards those things. Future goals, of course, university, save towards school. And I'm going to be the first to tell you, saving towards school almost doesn't make much sense because it might never reach. So you, you know, you do it, you get the scholarship, get your loan, and you go start the education. But that's just, by the way. Of course, you have to build up your money for retirement. So you have to save towards retirement. And you have to save up money if you want to start a new business. So those are some reasons that people might want to save their money. The amount to save depends on, of course, your income. You have a high income, of course, that means you might save a higher percentage of not percentage percent but a higher amount of money based on your income because if you make a million a year and you save ten percent that's way higher than somebody who makes you know a eighty thousand a year and save ten percent of that so you see you know so the higher the income the higher you you may be able to save and of course regular spending commitments if you have less spending commitments to save more you have more save less 
and of course thrift if you are natural if you're cheap if you're frugal if you're economical save more money immediate goals you want a vacation you want to go on vacation at the end of the year of course you start saving in january towards that vacation long-term goals you want to buy a house or a business you save towards that you know it might depend on how much you save and of course your stage in life your stage in life can really really determine how much you save because if you're just starting out in life young man 20 something just starting out in the business you might not have as much money to spare to save you might consume all your money but as you get older and older and you have less things to spend your money on and of, of course you're going to save more you know school is out the way you don't have your car you have your house so you don't, you don't have to spend on those things anymore so of course you're going to save more money as you get older saving rate and economy all right so of course the economy influences how you save if if you think that the economy is looking a little you know gloomy you know things might be tight in the next few months you know recession might be around the corner of course you're gonna save more because things start to put in up for a rainy day so you save more but if the economy booming man you know jobs everybody got jobs things there to buy you know you're making a lot of money of course you might say okay things good right now i'm gonna save less money you know because i must i must get paid next month maybe next month i might save or the other month because things looking nice uh the interest rates high or low now if your savings account has a high interest rate meaning that Based on how much money in your savings account, the bank can put on some more for your interest rate for saving with them. If that's a high one, of course you're gonna want to save because you're making more money. You're making money, you know. But if your bank got like a 0.5 interest rate, that only makes something. It makes sense save, you know. It makes sense keep it under your bed, under your pillow because putting it in the bank, you ain't getting no interest because interest rate is so so low. But if it's a high interest rate, of course you go save some money, make some money on that inflation influences real interest rate inflation is the general price level in an economy so if everything expensive price high for everything of course you cannot save as much because things expensive but if inflation is low you know making you good money but you know inflation low food cheap gas cheap everything cheap of course you're going to be able to save more then you have tax incentives to save or spend government might give you some taxes based on how you're saving for example if you saving towards retirement you have a 401k or something like that some kind of pension plan you might get a tax incentive to keep saving but if you break that pension plan you might get a tax penalty you know so that deter you from wanting to break it and you maintain the savings and of course the financial institutions might encourage saving with some nice incentives you know higher interest rates you know you know they might you might get special cash back buybacks those kind of things incentives they might promote a good saving scheme for you ways to save the number of ways to save commercial banks is the obvious one they have savings account fixed deposits as we have as we mentioned earlier and of course you have foreign currency deposits you can save by buying and selling foreign currencies of course you have life insurance insurance companies not often attach a saving scheme to some of your insurance policies you have your pension plans outside of the banks you have credit unions you can buy shares to become a member and of course you have the same similar services like the bank we have fixed deposits and saving accounts and of course group savings in the region we are famous for that they have different names around the region in like for example in st kitts they call it padnahan in other countries they call them susu in some countries we call them meeting turn so you know that's where you and a bunch of friends pull your money somebody get it this time then somebody get it the next time somebody gets it another time that's a form of saving but that form of saving doesn't really add interest but you know something the money dropping so good in a nice pool you know you get you five thousand in your hand for your birthday or something like that so you're dropping good money you would have spent elsewhere otherwise so something those old school ways of savings can be beneficial investment now now you have savings you have investment now investment is where you put your assets into something now to get a future return a future benefit so you put your money you know in an asset now to get a future return a future benefit for example you might want to build a house now put it on rent so you get passive income later you may want to buy some bonds or some stock in a company when it's low now so that in the future when it goes up you can sell that so investment is when it is is for now 
to get future rewards, future benefits. But of course, investment, as I say, carries some risk because sometimes you put money into a company and of course that company goes bankrupt and all that money gone down the drain. So it's one of the risks of investment. I mean, when you pay off, it pay off. It's a risk with you know, the high rewards. But sometimes you might lose out because the company gone under, the government gone under, the government got IMF because things tight. So sometimes investment don't really pan out. You, you invest in a piece of you know, in a piece of real estate only to find out the land condemn or hurricane come through, clean up the house. So problems, you know, somebody come put down a pigsty next to you, come build up a little shanty next to you, the value of the property gone down. So investment have got their own risk. Uh should earn a higher return than savings though investments tend to earn a higher return than savings because savings isn't much of a risk you put your money in the bank they give you a little two percent one percent two percent that's about it you know you can always go back for your money but investment higher risk but higher reward also because it tend to that's so you see the thing is savings you cannot really grow wealth with savings but you can grow your wealth with proper investment because investment gives you, you know, can give you a chance for what we call passive income. That's where you're sleeping and making money. You invest in the stock market, you invest in rental property. You're sleeping and making money just like that. Time as time go by, you're making money. That's what we call passive income. We are savings now. The money's in your account, but you know, 1% per annum, 2% per annum ain't much, but it's more secure when you want you can go for it the risk of losing it is way less than investment but again investment has higher returns higher rewards because the risk associated with investments tend to be higher ways to invest of course starting a business that's an investment like i said before you're going to invest now to reap the rewards later some small businesses don't make profit till year four year five year six but all that investment building up to when you start raking in that dough, start raking in the profit. That's what you're looking for. Of course, buying shares. Could you imagine that you would have bought some shares in Amazon or Apple or Google way back when, when they were cheap. Could you, and how much those shares were today? One Apple stock cost like a thousand US. Imagine you got about 10,000 of those stocks that you bought cheap back then. You'd have been a millionaire today, a billionaire almost. Yeah, you know, so... You have this whole cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency was, you know, a non, basically non-existent back in the day. People talk about mining for cryptocurrency. It was like a joke. Today, cryptocurrencies are worth so much more money. You know, so buying shares in companies, that's a way to invest. Because as a company expands, gets richer, the shares that you bought cheap now becomes worth more than you bought them for. So the returns again greater but if the company goes under all the money you invested gone in so that's a risk associated with investing in shares and of course you mentioned buying real estate you know you have you have people like president trump who made money from real estate buying property fixing a property selling property you get money for that you know but sometimes again risk you buy the property nobody want to buy it market gone down you're losing money but real estate is a way you can invest a good way to invest because the value of land tend to appreciate over time of course you have mutual funds and mutual fund is where you have a whole bunch of different investments coming together in a portfolio so you might invest in energies invest in real estate invest in this invest in that put it in a portfolio and it's, it's, a, it's a tend to be a secure way to invest because that means that if one industry goes up you get money but if one goes down the rest that goes up can counterbalance that one that gone down so you secured either way so you can invest in in, a, in opposite opposing stocks so if for example you invest in green energy you invest in coal or gas gas energy when you know people moving towards green energy and gas goes down your stocks for green energy shoots up and that could counteract the loss from the conventional energy so these are ways you can invest there are other ways but these are some of the key the key ones other ways to invest as stated by the syllabus you have of course the stock market and the stock market is one of the premier ways to invest if you are really really looking to build some 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 wealth now the stock market works like this you would have the stock market has a bunch of businesses listed some 
public limited companies and we described types of companies in a previous video so you have public li limited companies and they would sell shares they would sell shares on the stock exchange the stock market and you go to a broker and you buy shares for a variety of companies and the the key thing is to buy the shares at a low price and then you sell them later on at a higher price if the value of that company goes up so if the value of that company goes up that means the value of those stock goes stock of the stocks go up and you can then sell them if you want to i can hold on to them and use them as collateral and things like that but of course again the risk with this is that companies tend some companies can go under they can uh, go bankrupt and so the shares you bought in that company could be worth virtually nothing or the same companies you bought the shares let's say for ten dollars each then the company has some controversy and the value of the company drops so the shares become worth like two dollars each and so of course that means that your previous investment has gone south has gone underwater so those are risks that you find with these types of investment all right so let's move on look at section seven here objective seven explain the concept of short-term and long-term financing uh let's see trade types of short-term financing trade credit commercial bank loans promissory notes installment credit indigenous credit or private money lenders advances from customers factor factoring ventures so all these are crowdfunding one of the new ones angel investors all these are short-term financing or short-term refers to you know investment that you would recoup or have to pay back in a shorter span of time than long term long term normally you have 10 20 30 years you know like a mortgage as i said only short term long term like a mortgage most mortgages are 25 years 30 years those kind of things shares you can hold them for as long as you want insurance tend to be like a 30 years up to when you're 60 that's when you can dig in you know when you reach retirement to dig in and get some money from that from the insurance and investment you know investments can pay dividends way later on so it's about the time frame here now short term commercial bank loan some bank loan outside of the mortgage they would give you loans for you know two year three year five years those kind of things and then you have crowdfunding you have your kickstarters you have the gofundme those things are just short term funding you have a couple months or so that the, you run the campaign for after which you know you have to come up with whatever you get whatever money is that will promise to you based on the, the campaign so that was a short term form of lending you know you raise a 10,000 here 20,000 here in a short span of time so it's all about the time frame in which you have to you know repay that money or that the amount of money that you you borrow to do whatever you want to so you want to buy a car you go for a little short term loan you want to you know build something you are gonna go fund me a kickstarter something like that to get a quick money short term lending short term financing so it's about the time frame the short term of course is shorter long term longer obviously and so these are just the example the types of of short term versus long term investments moving on to section a sorry eight section eight identify personal sources of capital this one is very straightforward this is asking you for where you as a person can get money from where can i get some capital where can i get some monies and of course you have a list here now obviously you have of course you can get friends and families from your personal savings for whatever you want you may want to start a business we want to buy something so you can go and ask your friends and families for money you can save towards it of course government have grants out there grants are you know money is government set aside for certain specific objectives you have up loans from your commercial banks then you have equity that's things like your shares and your stocks and those things they buy part you know ownership in a company in a business then you have venture capital where you go to somebody to invest in you and then after you make back your money you have to pay them and then that's it for that now venture capitalists are though a lot of those people exist in silicon valley where they help with startups they are the ones who help with startups they give them the seed money and after the company gets back the money you pay your venture capitalist with interest of a course and then that's it for them they, they don't own any part of the business they're just giving the money to start it when you make it back you pay them back and as we discussed before crowdfunding where you have you know platforms like kickstarter 
and GoFundMe where you can go and ask people for money. You can ask random strangers for money. Start a campaign. They give you money to do whatever, whether medical bills, whether to come up with an invention, you know, make a prototype, those kind of things. You have crowdfunding. That's a, that's a new form, a newer form of funding that exists today. So that's it for part two of business finance. So the, the next video I'm going to try and put out would be, it's going to be, I think it might be, might be an economics video, but I'll also try to do some other parts of POB that I realized I didn't cover. So I'll get a video done on that. So of course, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, click that notification bell for when the next video drops and learn SKN. You know, CXC have their exams in January, you have POB in January. So of course you have to start studying now. If you want to get a good grade, you know, December, Christmas, you might get distracted. So you start studying now. So subscribe and click the notification bell for when more drops. All right, so that's it for now from Learn SKN.